Uh, but the biggest thing is the kids want to know that you care about them, you believe in them. And that was one thing Coach Coach Hill, when I started at Matter, was one of the things he told me is make sure the kids know that you really you love them. Episode 106 featured Coach Dontavious Smith, the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Keystone College. For more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. Appreciate you having me, man. Uh, good to be here. So Coach Smith, he just completed his sixth season at Keystone College, which is near Scranton, Pennsylvania. So to officially get things started, Coach, can you just share with the audience about your background and how you got into your current role as the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach there? Yeah, I'm from I'm originally from Georgia. So when I tell people that, they, you know, they kind of be like, what? You're a long way from home. Uh, dealing with the cold weather up here is always a challenge year in and year out. Um, but I got into coaching after I graduated from Georgia Southern. Uh, I jumped into high school. You know, I didn't jump into college right away. I jumped into high school down in Metter, Georgia, for four years of coaching there. Uh, great, great experience. Learned a lot of offensive football, um, how to call, how to call plays, how to coach the positions, uh, coach receivers, I uh, coach quarterbacks there. Uh, so great, great staff, great mentor there in Clay Hill. I have Coach Dwayne Davis as well down there, um, who I stay in contact with um, yearly. Um, then from there, I went to Atlanta uh, and took a, a job at a newer school, newer program, high school as well, at River Ridge High School. Um, head coach there, Robert Brott, uh, great, great guy, um, gave me the opportunity to come and help start building a program. Um, I actually started on the defensive side of the ball there, you know, me being off as a coordinator, being able to see from that side. Um, and then the second year there, I, I coached the receivers. Uh, and it was a great, it, it, we had a great turnaround. We went two and eight the first year there. The next year we saw the talent. We went eight and two the very next year. So it, it was a quick, it was a quick turnaround there. Um, after in 2012, after that season was there, I, I really wanted to get into college football. That was kind of the goal at the beginning, but I thought, you know, getting into it was I'd have to start coaching somewhere first, which, you know, led me to high school. Um, which gave me a great perspective at the college level. 2012, I came up here the first time in Pennsylvania, went to Widener University. I actually jumped into college there, and I promise you that was a magical year for me. My first year, I coached receivers there, had a really talented bunch of kids, really great kids there. And the experience there, I thought college football was supposed to be that experience everywhere you went. Uh, we went 12-1, and one, won the conference, made it to the elite eight in division three football. And now, and, and I thought like that's college football, like that's what we're supposed to do every year. And then reality set in later on. Um, so after a year there, going 12 one, I took an offensive coordinator job at a prep school, which was a different perspective from high school, but not necessarily college. Those kids that kind of wanted that extra year of development. Um, it was at Atlanta sports Academy, which at the time was, probably one of the premier uh, prep schools in the country. Um, we played a huge schedule, played up in Nassau, played ASA, uh, Georgia military. So some of the top tier junior colleges. So those kids got, you know, a, a view of what college football looked like from a, from that perspective really quick. Um, and then after a year there, um, the experience that I took from there, I took to Iowa with me. I went out to an NAIA school, uh, at Waldorf University, spent two years out there where I coached the receivers uh, my first year, coached the running backs my second year, helped with a lot of the special teams out there as well. Great experience, way colder than it is here in Pennsylvania. So, you know, being back in Pennsylvania, you know, that I say that kind of helped me with this. Um, but two years there, I thought it was a great experience, uh, made great connections there. Uh, from the Midwest, and then I two years after that, I dropped down in uh, Texas, and we all understand how Texas football is, you know. So I really wanted to experience that. I went out to Sol Ross State uh, University, probably as far west Texas as you can go, you know. If I pointed to it, point to El Paso, right next to it is Alpine, Texas. Um, so that was a great experience in terms of you know being able to recruit those kids coach those type of kids up, you realize how much talent is really in Texas, you know, from the division one level down, how much talent is still left over to have, you know, again, play good football at, at our, at our level. Um, so I, I, I coached the quarterbacks and receivers there. I added the role of special teams coordinator my second year there. Um, we did well, we went five and five. 
And then from there, when the Keystone job opened up, I didn't take it the first time. You know, it didn't work out for me. Um, I, I interviewed with Justin Higgins through phone, uh, via phone the, uh, the first time, and it didn't work out financially. Um, I, I was interested in the job. It was an offensive job. Didn't know it would be coordinator. Um, he was very transparent in the process on whether he want to hire a coordinator or line coach first. Um, so it didn't work out for me to get up there and interview. So that's what kept me my second year at Soul Ross. Uh, that off season after my second year, uh, he reached out, and that's what I was still interested in applying for their offense coordinator job. Obviously, I wanted to get back to calling plays, so I, I, I jumped at the opportunity. And this time, everything kind of aligned. You know, we, I was able to travel up there. You know, very you know financially, it was it was it was agreeable for me. Stayed overnight. I interviewed. It was an all day process. Enjoyed it, um, and then I got offered the job around things just after Thanksgiving of that November. Um, started in December and I loved what we were doing there, his vision for the program and how we were gonna build it. You know, the kids we want to bring in, just the core values of the program, the culture. I agreed with all of it. And when you offered the job, I couldn't say no. So I've been there, I've been here since 2018. So obviously it seems like you have a Rolodex of experience at the high school level and then, you know, going down to like college so can you talk about some of your experiences that you've had at, at all the levels and what are some of the values that you've learned along the way that have, you know, served you well at, at this stage in your career as you're now the offense coordinator? Well, the big thing about it is when I first jumped into coaching, I th always thought it was about the X's and O's, you know, what you knew. Um, and that's part of it with the kids. Uh, but the biggest thing is the kids want to know that you care about them, you believe in them. And that was one thing Coach Coach Hill, when I started at Metter, was one of the things he told me is make sure the kids know that you really you love them, you know. And I didn't understand that at first. You know, I thought you had to go in there, and put the hammer down, kind of be disciplined in that. And uh, I didn't get the results immediately that I wanted. I kind of got a little bit of pushback from them because they felt like, you know, I was trying to come in there and somewhat be like a bully, you know, yeah. um, a kind of dictator, you know, authoritarian type. And that just wasn't my personality. You know, I'm a real personable guy. So I had to go back and rethink about how I was going to approach it. And uh, I went back and I just, I was just myself. You know, I was, I'm very charismatic. I laugh, I joke, I keep the room light, excuse me. And uh, that was more, that was more absorbent for the kids. You know, they, they, they took to that and I became more of the player coach type, you know, and that's kind of what I've been all in my career. So outside of the X's and O's, which I think, you know, some coaches think you have to, you have to know that they, they have to believe in what you're coaching. And when it comes out of your mouth, you have to sound believable, you know, to an degree, but they want to know that you care about them first. You know, if they don't, if you don't care about them, then whatever you say, it doesn't really matter to those guys. And that's kind of the value that I have, you know, being a family guy, have four kids, you know, is trying to instill that, that, that fatherly, um, atmosphere to them that way when I do speak they're listening you know and that's the, and I think and, and with that they understand that I want the best from them and of them and they're willing to give me that so that's, that's kind of what I've built my values on is being more family oriented um, but also being a, a coach that you know when the, when I'm off the field they still can come and talk to me and feel like they can open up about things outside of football yeah and if uh, one of the common themes that's a part of this podcast is just that, is that, you know, relationships trump everything at the end of the day. And if you go, if you go back and you watch a lot of these conversations I've had with, you know, successful coaches at all, at all stages of their career, guys that are just got, starting off guys that are 30, 40 years into it, you know, relationships are, are so important. And for, for somebody like you, who's had success at every level, you know, I'm sure, you, you just attested to it and, you know, it, it's just so important regardless of what level you're at. Sure. Sure. And, and, and it's gone from the high school on up. You kind of get a different perspective of it. You know, a high school, you kind of get who you get. You try to develop those guys, put them in the best possible position to be successful. Um, the relationships are different. You know, at the high school level, you might be their teacher, their P coach, you know, their P teacher, but you're ultimately their coach. You know, and you're also kind of that fatherly figure that some of them may not have. 
as you get into college, the relationships kind of change. Still the same, just a little different. You know, you're recruiting a kid. Now you're building a relationship from almost an adult, you know, a, a young man to a, an older man type relationship. Some of these kids do have fathers. So you're almost trying to finish the process of stepping in that gap for four years where dad isn't on campus to watch over them. So the relationship changes a little bit in terms of high school versus college, but the, the, the foundation of it is still the same. You want to have that relationship that when you feel, you know, if you have to put your foot down, they understand you care. When they need to talk, you understand, they understand you care. You know, it's not just, hey, come play football for me for four years. Thank you for your service. See you later. Yeah. It's, yeah. I want to come to your wedding, you know, type right. deal. And that, and that's the thing too. It comes down to like, just when you, when you come from a place of love and I know, you know, as, as football guys, we're not necessarily like, that's not a word that a lot of people use, but when you really care about the kids and when you, when you show them that by being interested in things beyond football with them, you know, I think that's, that really goes a long way and inadvert, not necessarily inadvertently, but like without you like pushing that on them, they're going to be more prone to like go that extra mile for you as a coach from, from these conversations I've had. Sure. And that's what, you know, again, that's kind of what you want is you want to build that relationship and that foundation starts, you know, at the relationship level where you can do that, you know, and they walk away feeling like they have somebody in their corner. Definitely. So if you had to go back to, you know, your early days when you were, and I think you had mentioned like, you were at Widener when you were still like a young coach. So if you had to go back to those days, what advice would you give yourself to like maybe that you know now that you didn't know back then? Um, I'd say still be yourself, but you have to be, you have to kind of set the tone of what you want expectation wise, you know, don't go in thinking that you know it all because you may not but also be detailed in how you coach and how you teach, you know, because those guys have to perform, you know, being confident and not in the you know, college, they're going to test you again, they're young men. So they want to know that when you speak that it's, it's legit, you know, so being able to stand up in front of those guys and kind of set the expectation and the tone of what you expect from them. And then also giving them the expectation of yourself towards them. You know, so again, goes back to that relationship part. But when you're able to be in kind of that that vulnerable state where it's, hey, I'm here for you guys, but understand, you know, we're here to do a job, you know, because it is my job. You know, I have to feed my family. I have to make sure you guys are performing at a high level for me to keep this job. Um, uh, so you got to be able to put yourself in that position where, you know, when you speak, they understand that work needs to be done. But you know, hey, we're going to keep it light. We're going to keep it fun, but we're going to get, we're going to make sure we get where we need to go. Yes, sir. Yeah, hundred percent agree there. So any last words with the voice coach that you want to share with the audience? Yeah, I mean, you've already heard it. You know, when you, if you were a young guy jumping into coaching, you know, be open for knowledge. You know, not every coach knows it all. You know, I've been doing this for a long time, high school through college, and I'm still learning things. You know, I go to guys that I ask questions on how they may have answers for def different defenses, coverages, and things like that. So you're all, always be a student of the game. And never, never assume that you know everything. Yes, we all kind of run similar things offensively, defensively, but how people teach it, how they install it, may be something different. And if you can take a nugget, you know, here and there from a different coach, you know, you can tweak it and teach something, you know, differently. It might absorb a little differently to a, to a different kid that may click for them. So always be open and, you know, detailed oriented in what you're doing and be willing to willing to learn. You know, that's the big thing. You know, we don't know it all. You know, even the older coaches to tell you, they're still learning. Yeah. So be being open and willing to do that in that process and be able to add it to your Rolodex of knowledge. Uh, you'll be you'll be fine. Yes, sir. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for being on the podcast today, coach. Best of luck as you're, you know, recruiting in the off season and, and thanks again.